Let's celebrate 100 years of the Walt Disney Company. One major Disney accomplishment will be highlighted for each year of the past 100 years. In this episode, 1923 to 1972, the first 50 years, there will be only one entry for each year. So some very important Disney milestones did not make the list. So if you don't see your favorite, let me know down below in the comments. Okay, let's go way back a whole century to 1923. In 1923, Walt and Roy Disney kicked off the first 100 years of the Disney Brothers Cartoon Studio? Well, now it is known as the Walt Disney Company. But in 1923, before Mickey Mouse was even a thought, Walt and Roy set up shop to start working on the Alice comedies. In 1924, short film combining live action and animation, Alice's Day at Sea, debuted as the first of several Alice comedies. In 1925, the character Peg Leg Pete debuted in the Alice comedy, Alice Solves the Puzzle. He would go on to become the nemesis of Mickey Mouse and later star in Steamboat Willie. In 1926, the Disney Brothers Cartoon Studio changed its name to the Walt Disney Studio. In 1927, the first Oswald the Lucky Rabbit cartoon debuted. In 1928, Disney lost the rights to Oswald, whose absence caused Walt to create Mickey Mouse. After several decades, Disney finally reacquired the rights to Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, who returned to Disney in the 2010 video game Epic Mickey. In 1928, Steamboat Willie, starring Mickey and Minnie Mouse, debuted at the Colony Theater in New York. Steamboat Willie was one of the very first cartoons with synchronized sound. And while Steamboat Willie was the first Mickey and Minnie Mouse cartoon to be released, they had already made an appearance on film in a test screening of the silent cartoon short Plane Crazy earlier that same year. In 1929, the animated short The Skeleton Dance premiered. The Skeleton Dance was the first of 75 different silly symphonies Disney produced over a decade. In 1930, the Mickey Mouse comic strip began, which at first was written by Walt Disney himself, with art by Win Smith and Ub Iwerks. In 1931, the Mickey Mouse cartoon The Moose Hunt marked the one and only time Mickey's dog Pluto had spoken dialogue. In 1932, the silly symphony Flowers and Trees was the first cartoon to use three-strip Technicolor. Flowers and Trees won the very first Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film. In 1933, the silly symphony The Three Little Pigs debuted. It featured the song Who's Afraid of the Big Bad Wolf, which not only became a hit, but an anthem for the Great Depression. In 1934, Silly Symphony, The Wise Little Hen, debuted, introducing the world to Donald Duck. In 1935, the band concert debuted, becoming the first Mickey Mouse cartoon in color. In 1936, Mortimer Mouse debuted in the Mickey Mouse cartoon Mickey's Rival. When Walt Disney was originally dreaming up Mickey Mouse, he was going to name him Mortimer Mouse, until his wife Lillian expressed her dislike for the name Mortimer and suggested to Walt to name the mouse Mickey. While the name Mickey Mouse prevailed, the name Mortimer Mouse was not forgotten. And from 1936 on, we have both mice, Mickey and his rival Mortimer. In 1937, the very first full-length animated feature, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, debuted at the Carthay Circle Theater in Los Angeles. Skeptics thought that people would never sit through a movie-length cartoon. And boy, did Walt Disney triumphantly prove them wrong. In 1938, a musical variety radio show, the Mickey Mouse Theater of the Air, debuted on NBC Radio. Sponsored by Pepsodent, it featured Mickey Mouse and other Disney characters of the time to promote the movie Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. In all, there were 20 broadcasts. In 1939, Shirley Temple presented Walt Disney an honorary Academy Award consisting of one large Oscar and seven small Oscars for his innovative work on Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs at the 11th Annual Academy Awards. In 1940, full-length animated features Pinocchio and Fantasia both debuted in theaters. In 1941, the U.S. government was concerned that Nazis and fascists were influencing South America. America. So by the U.S. government's request, Walt Disney and his team traveled to South America on a goodwill trip to strengthen public relations with the United States. 
1942, feature-length animated film Bambi debuted in theaters. In 1943, Donald Duck starred in the American animated anti-Nazi propaganda short film The Fuhrer's Face. Originally, The Fuhrer's Face was known as Donald Duck and Nazi Land. In 1944, the full-length animated feature Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was re-released, which started a pattern of Disney re-releasing its animated features in theaters. In 1945, anthology film combining live action and animation, The Three Caballeros, debuted in the United States following its world premiere in Mexico City a year before. In 1946, a feature-length film that combined live action with animation, Song of the South debuted. To learn about the history of Song of the South and the history of Splash Mountain, the Disneyland and Walt Disney World attraction inspired by the movie, watch my video, Is Tiana's Bayou Adventure a Better Fit Than Splash Mountain? I will leave a link in the description below. In 1947, Walt Disney provided the voice for Mickey Mouse in the short Mickey and the Beanstalk as part of the feature film Fun and Fancy Free. After completing Mickey and the Beanstalk, Walt Disney became too busy to do steady voice work. So he handed over the role of Mickey Mouse to Jimmy McDonald. From that point forward, Walt only occasionally voiced the famous mouse. In 1948, the first of the True Life Adventure series, Seal Island, debuted in theaters. In 1949, the Walt Disney Music Company formed. In 1950, Disney's first completely live action feature film, Treasure Island, debuted. In 1951, full length animated feature, Alice in Wonderland, debuted. In 1952, WED Enterprises was founded by Walt for the purpose of designing Disneyland. WED was an acronym composed of Walt's initials, Walter Elias Disney. WED was renamed to Walt Disney Imagineering in 1986. In 1953, full-length animated feature Peter Pan flew into theaters. In 1954, Walt Disney's Disneyland television show premiered on ABC for the purpose of introducing the concept of Disneyland to the world. The show changed names multiple times, including The Wonderful World of Disney, which was a staple of Sunday night television for decades. In 1955, Disneyland opened its gates to the world in Anaheim, California, starting with five themed lands, Main Street USA, Adventureland, Frontierland, Land, Fantasyland, and Tomorrowland. In 1956, the Skyway attraction with one-way trips to and from Fantasyland and Tomorrowland opened. In 1957, Zorro, the television series, debuted on the ABC network. In 1958, the dark ride Alice in Wonderland opened in Fantasyland in Disneyland. The attraction was reimagined in 1984 for the second phase of the new Fantasyland, and additional lighting and special effects were added in 2014. I'm late. I'm late for a very important date. And that date is 1959. In 1959, the Matterhorn and the Submarine Voyage attractions opened in Tomorrowland at Disneyland. In 1960, the Sherman Brothers began their 13-year career at Disney. The Sherman Brothers wrote countless memorable Disney songs, including It's a Small World, It's a Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow, played at the Carousel of Progress, and the music in the movie Mary Poppins. In 1961, full-length animated feature, 100 101 Dalmatians debuted. In 1962, the Tahitian Terrace, a South Seas themed restaurant where a Polynesian show entertained diners, opened in Adventureland at Disneyland. In 1963, Attraction, the Enchanted Tiki Room, opened in Adventureland at Disneyland. The Enchanted Tiki Room was the very first attraction to feature audio animatronics. In 1964, Disney opened four exhibits at the New York World's Fair, all of which found homes in Disneyland after the fair. Pepsi's It's a Small World, The State of Illinois' Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln, Ford's Magic Skyway, which featured the dinosaurs that later became part of Primeval World along the Disneyland Railroad, and General Electric's Carousel of Progress. In 1965, live action feature film That Darn Cat debuted in theaters. What can I say? It was a slow year for Disney. 1966. In July 1966, Walt Disney and the mayor of New Orleans at the time, Victor Shiro, conducted the opening ceremony of New Orleans Square at Disneyland. This was Walt Disney's last major public appearance at Disneyland before he passed away in December of the same year. 
1967, Johnny Depp was merely four years old when the attraction Pirates of the Caribbean opened in New Orleans Square at Disneyland. In 1968, animated featurette Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day debuted in theaters. It was shown as a double feature with a live action comedy feature, The Horse in the Gray Flannel Suit. The Haunted Mansion first materialized in Disneyland in 1963, but sat there lifelessly with locked doors, causing guests to wonder who or what resides within. In 1969, the Haunted Mansion finally began welcoming foolish mortals in for tours. In 1970, the Aristocats debuted in theaters. Although Walt Disney did not live to see the opening of Walt Disney World, his brother Roy Disney did. In 1971, Roy Disney opened the Walt Disney World Resort before passing away a few months later that same year. The opening year kicked off with the Magic Kingdom, the Contemporary Resort, the Polynesian Village Resort, and a monorail system connecting the three. Following the success of the electrical water pageant at Walt Disney World, in 1972, the Main Street Electrical Parade stepped off in Disneyland for the very first time. Now I want to hear from you. What was your favorite year in Disney history? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this episode, please click like and subscribe. Let's continue the celebration of 100 years of Disney with part two of this video that will continue right where this video left off with 1973 and will continue until we've reached 100 years of Disney magic. I'll see you over there in the next video.